Hi, I'm here with the Oxfordshire Bodgers at Coombe Mill and we're going to be using the foreman's office here today to do a leatherworking workshop. So let's go up and see what sort of leatherworking uh, activities are happening. Hopefully people are making sheaves and covers for their tools. Let's go see what's on. So tell us what you're doing then. So I'm making a, a sheaf for a left-handed axe for when I do my um, spoon carving courses, just so there's enough different types of axes to go round. And I'm using a really rather crude method to sew the uh, axe sheath. So I'm using veg tanned leather and this um, homemade pony, which is made out of horse chestnut wood. Um, uh, it's all um, lashed together with a bit of rope at the moment, but um, hopefully it'll do the business a bit later. Um, and uh, this isn't the prettiest stitching in the world, but it'll hold it all together, which is the key thing. So you're using a single needle rather than a double needle? Yeah, well, I'm using um, uh, two needles, I'm just doing them one at a time. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a uh, rather crude, but uh, effective. That's what they call a saddle stitch, isn't it? That is indeed. Yeah. Well, somewhere I've gone wrong. Stop it there then. Right. All right, Neil, what are you up to? I'm just forming my sheath. And how are you I've doing that? I've soaked it in warm water. Yeah. And now I'm using um, a smooth edge, in this case the bottom of a spoon, to, to shape the leather to suit the blade so that the blade and the handle fit snug within the sheath. So your sheath is the other way around, isn't it? It is indeed. The seam runs down the back rather than down the side. And what are the holes at the back for? The, ho the holes at the back are where there's going to be a swallow's tail belt loop, if that makes sense. It does. Looks like your uh, knife is got cling film all over it. It has got cling film. Why it's is that? it it's been smeared with Vaseline and then wrapped in cling film to protect the carbon steel from the water so that it doesn't rust whilst it's in situ. Fabulous. Thank you. It's called I would call that a bramble slasher. I think. So Ed, what are you doing? I'm making a cover from it. Bramble slasher. Right. Which will stick in here and then um, some studs will hold it closed. So a lot of the woodland owners have very sharp bramble slashers. I've never sharpened mine because I think what are you doing down here? Oh this is the saddle stitching. And I'm just pushing the spiky thing through there. And double stitching. So again, this is two needles rather than one needle. That's right. It's quite a technique, isn't it? Yeah. I'm using technique of using just a big hole and wiggling the needles through. So the needle go through the through the hole you have the needle going either way. Yes. Aha. And the uh, the thread itself, what have you done to that to, to make it sort of slide through easily? Waxed it. What with what what have you waxed it with? Uh, beeswax. Right. That's great, thank you very much. Thank you. So Joe, tell me what you've been up to today. Well, this is the first sheath I've, uh, I've made and it was, it's, it was made with a, a number of us having a go, which is sort of quite nice as well. Uh -huh. So we, we started off by making a template uh, around the knife itself. And there was an awful lot of measuring going on to make sure that uh, what we made would fit so we used a template like this to actually measure 
uh, the circumference of, of the knife to ensure that the when the sheath was made it would actually fit inside. Uh -huh. And then from that from that template, actually cut a piece of leather. And then we used a tool to cut this little groove all the way around the outside. Oh yes. And to ensure that the stitches themselves would be equal, we used a, a, a wheel, a wheel with spikes on, and that gave us the guidance to uh, make sure that the uh, the holes for the stitching were, were, was correct. Stitch that together, and then we actually wrap the knife in uh, cling film, and put it inside here, and then soaked it. We soaked the leather, so this was, was really quite supple. Uh -huh. And then you can see on the edge here, it's it's sort of taken the shape of the knife. That's right. And that, that was done with the back of a spoon. Um, and then the, the, the final bit to, to make this actually fit um, was uh, air drying it with a hair dryer. Okay, which I can hear um, Neil that's doing in the background. That's going away in the background. And this is what's called a swallowtail. Uh, you can see it's, it's really quite strong inside there. And it's just a series of holes. The leather is split. Oh, yep. A little hole at the back to stop the leather splitting any further and it's just tension that's holding it in place right. so really good really clever excellent great day's work brilliant well thank you very much thank you and that's a very smart knife that's going in there that is a smart knife isn't it Tell yeah about it. well it's a damascus steel knife i don't know a great deal much more than that but it's it's a it's a knife that i can use uh in the bush because it's heavy enough if i wanted to split wood to make a fire you can see i've sort of bashed it on the back a few times Excellent. used a fire steel on it as well but it's just a nice knife to it just sits and works quite nicely for me and what sort of wood is the handle making uh i don't know i should didn't shouldn't i but i bought it as a complete kit it could be right. walnut it could be something like something along those lines excellent that's great good i'm glad it's got a sheath to keep it sharp and safe it has indeed thank you very much Joe. thank you